Sure. Thank you. I'm going to talk to you about uh, employment and social protection. A couple of quick uh, um, mental uh, reminders. We could see unemployment reach 60 million more people than just over uh, 14 months ago. And we've got about a, around about 1.4 billion people now living on less than $2 a day. We know that uh, global imbalances, inequity and greed created the financial crisis. Poverty and unemployment, you'd all argue, are risk factors in terms of uh, sustainable global econ economy, a, a, a sustainable global economy, but they're also elements, of course, critical elements of development, growth and sustainability, so they must be addressed. The G20 has uh, charged the uh, Financial Services Board. Some of, it, some of us have said it's, uh, we've characterised it as the Financial Secrecy Board, but nevertheless, uh, with uh, managing financial reform and the IMF to manage an early warning system and uh, with the resulting action, including now peer reviews for economic uh, health in order to avoid risk. But where is the equivalent governance responsibility for tackling the risk to development, equity and growth, and that is unemployment and social protection. Doesn't exist with the same stature. And you heard Sarkozy yesterday talking about the need to raise the status of the ILO, um, and uh, Larry and I have arguments about this, but in the context of balancing trade. So what we're saying is we need urgent response. In the longer term, the UN response should be effective and we should have a management uh, capacity. But it's not there yet, and anyone who spent those depressing days in Copenhagen would have to ask whether or not we've got the capacity for global governance. So we're saying the only show in town is right now the G20, and we need them to uh, establish a short-term task force on employment and social protection if the world's to avoid business as usual and the continuing risk to uh, imbalances and other crises. The G20 with other regional leaders from Africa, Latin America and Asia, because it's got to become more inclusive, whoever made that point, unless you can build those uh, relationships and people have some trust in it, is not going to be the legitimate piece. But with other relevant UN agencies, worker and employer reps, then we need to set a task force that actually tackles a number of things. There's agreement between employers, government and workers on the jobs pact that the ILO, were, we negotiated at the ILO. It's about income-led recovery, it's about building domestic markets, it's about recognising the contribution to building sustainable domestic growth, that social protection and then Mark, labour market forces with uh, investment in jobs and, of course, industry policy can uh, enhance. And, of course, that goes to climate financing, investment in industry and employment. So we need multilateral support, but we also need to make sure that the actors are in place. Managing an income-led development and sustainability requires global action. I don't think there's anyone that would argue that national and international interaction is critical. The wealthy countries have both a moral and economic motivation to invest in employment and social protection worldwide. That will overcome global imbalances and generate sustainable growth. But unless we have the radical, unorthodox approach that we had to saving the financial system, to establishing social protection and employment, then if you've just been in Africa as I have and you watch the level of development just now almost totally uh, stagnant, then we are not going to make the grade. So a multi-stakeholder G20 task force on employment and social protection, we think it can achieve policy coherence, but it requires serious mandate from the, uh, the G20 members and other regional actors in terms of government leaders to mandate, the just as they have with the finance ministers, their uh, labour ministers uh, to work on a global jobs pact, including deeper measures of employment and social protection. In the longer term, we would like to see a powerful economic and social council, but in the short term, we'd settle for coherent policy development and, of course, the measures that put employment and social protection, both as a risk and an element of development, right up there with the economic uh, data we all uh, pour over, whether it's about growth or inflation or whatever. I'd like my group to talk about, first of all, how you would structure such a proposal, but then elements of the work that you know is necessary if you're going to build your domestic economies, allow them to play competitively into a global economy that's based on sustainability and one that will overcome those imbalances. Sharon, thank you, first of all.